what do we call what's on the back of a book? There's a particular name for it. Blurb. Brilliant, Rahida. <laughs> okay, I didn't no, I didn't expect anyone to get that. Yeah, you read the blurb. Okay. B How did you spell that? B L U R B. I'm I'm going to show it to you in a minute because I've got some PowerPoint to show you. You read the blurb, okay, on the back of the book. And that's what I always do. And it has to inspire me. And of course, it's meant to inspire me. And I'm a bit of a snob sometimes about books. So I oh, I have to look at reviews. So here we go on this one. This is a, I'll tell you about this book in a minute. This is by Robert Harris, who writes historical fiction. No. Menace and suspense twist tight. The Sunday Times. Folly justifies being called a masterpiece. Daily Mail. Daily Mail, <laughs> books of the year. Taught and exciting. Taught. You know it? What does it mean? Uh, uh, it means like it sounds actually right. Tight. <laughs> it's not full of wasteful prose. It doesn't embellish, if you like. It's to the point, but it can still be good. Effortlessly brilliant. Seriously riveting. Riveting? Riveting, everyone? No, sorry, I don't know. Riveting. Right. Okay. If you have a car, rivets are what holds much of the car together they're the metal things which are screwed in okay if you're riveted by a film you can't stop watching it when we talked about you being mesmerized milena you were also riveted okay you were spellbound it didn't come up on the other hand because they had they were poles apart poles marima and milena were poles apart in their opinions about Titanic, which we'll be discussing. Poles apart, North Pole, South Pole, poles apart. Okay, they were poles apart in their opinions, weren't they, Rahila? And Marima did not find it riveting, she found it too long. And then she got defensive when I said, you found it boring. No, I didn't find it boring. I just found it long. It went on for a long time. So their opinions were diametrically opposed. Have you heard of that one? You know, a dia diameter. Their opinions were diametrically opposed. Yeah, that was riveting. That's the blur at the back of this book. This book, actually, uh, Robert Harris he used to be a newsreader, I think, on the BBC, and then he turned to being author. And his his books are always historical. He's, he's written a lot about ancient Rome, and a little about the Second World War. This one, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed, uh, I'm doing thoroughly enjoyed. Remember we talked about that the other day? collocation how did you enjoy it instead of just saying i enjoyed it i thoroughly enjoyed it remember we, because we said we can't say i extremely enjoyed it thoroughly really enjoyed it absolutely enjoyed it um what i like about his books is because they are now i'm going to talk about history here they are based on history on facts. So I what word could I say? They are in history. They are in, in historical facts. Think of a tree. They are or a plant. They are rooted. They are rooted in history. Okay, like the historical fiction you read about the rooted in history. I quite liked the cover. I was impressed by it. It got good reviews. Okay. And the book is actually, let's see, knowledge of history here. 
This has fascinated me since I was um, at school. It's about the Dreyfus case. You know what the Dreyfus case was? Dreyfus was a, a French man. I think he was an author. And um, in the late 19th century, he was sent to Devil's Island. He was in prison. It was a, a very strange case. And eventually he was reinstated. And a lot of it was to, to do with the fact that he was Jewish. Okay, that, and it's called the D R E Y F U S, and it's based on that. And it's a bit like a crime. It's a bit like a crime novel. Okay, Robert Harris wrote one about Pompeii. The 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 very good. Now, quite like that cover. So, Anything about the Tudors? Sorry. Anything about the Tudors? I would read that if he wrote anything about the Tudors. He didn't, but there is someone else who... Oh, no, it, it doesn't go as far as the Tudor. Ken Follett is a good one. I suggest that you find Wolf Hall by... I will. Um, and the sequels. She's, she died very recently. I can't remember what she's called now. I mentioned her, her name earlier. It's called Wolf Hall. It's not easy reading. You have to keep going to the end of the book to find out who the characters are but if you saw the tv one it, 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 hillary mantel that's who now do you look at the front of a book and it in in deciding whether it's going to be interesting when i do sometimes i do but some pictures can be very bland actually they don't say much about so i'd rather look at the title well, yeah, that is really fun. misleading I, sometimes. Sometimes I prefer it, if it's going to get it wrong, I prefer it not to have a picture on it. And I'm going to show you an example. Would you buy that? It's about the Arthurian legend by a woman called Rosemary Sutcliffe. It's not about knights in shining armor. You know, the Arthurian legend, King Arthur, no one knows if he was existed. If he did exist, he was likely to be. The warrior and that's this is the supposition that this author makes about him that he's a romano british roman british warrior who fights against the anglo-saxons if i hadn't read this if i saw this in a store in the bookstore i wouldn't buy it because i thought yeah it looks a bit it looks naff do you know that word, naff? If something's naff, it means it's like about a book, it looks a bit trashy. It look, no, it, oh, sorry, trashy. All right, it, it's something, it, it's not very good. Okay, it looks like it looks cheap, but in actual fact, it's an excellent book because previously. I'd add the hardback version, and the imagery on the front was a lot more mystical. But I lent it to someone, a girlfriend, years ago, and I never got it back because we stopped the relationship. Actually, it serves me right. Serves me right? You know what serves me right? It serves me right because it was a library book, and I never returned it to the library. <laughs> but, but the book is excellent. OK, she was a children's author, but this one's for, for adults. But I but it's the only it's available with a different cover. But I hate that cover. It's just but I'm, a, I'm a bit of a book snob and I don't like I don't like that, that cover. What's the expression? Come on, there's an idiom there in what I've been talking about. You can't. Judge. A book, a book by its cover. cover. Judge a book by its cover. And it's true in that case. Now, we talked about Dickens. Yes, it is. The reason that these historical books can be difficult is because they use language of that epoch. The epoch's a long period of time. The, langu the language of, of the time. And Dickens certainly does. 
and it's taking and it, it was written in those times and is using language which was used there. It's like Shakespeare, like Shakespeare did. Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen does. The Bronte sisters, who I love, I've been to the Bronte Museum in Yorkshire. They use language. Now, Wuthering Heights is one of my favourite books. Okay? But it is not an easy read. It's not a comfortable read. Okay, It's not a comfortable read because there's a lot of tragedy in it. There's a lot of argument in it. There's a lot of violence about it in it. It's amazing that Emily could have written it because, as far as we know, she had no knowledge of men, apart from a father and a brother, but it is very passionate. Not explicitly passionate, like books are, are today. There are no sexual scenes in it or anything like that. But the emotions are so passionate. But the language... It is used in conversation. I'll just read you an extract. You, this is a start, and you, you wouldn't come across this language now. And, and this is just the first paragraph, eighteen oh one. That's year. I have just returned from a visit to my landlord, the solitary neighbour that I shall be troubled with. This is certainly a beautiful country. In all England, I do not believe that I could have fixed on a situation so completely removed from the stir of society. A perfect misanthropist's heaven. And Mr Heathcliff and I are such a suitable pair to divide the desolation between us. A capital fellow. We wouldn't talk like that today. A capital fellow. Oh, yes, he's a capital fellow. OK, just first paragraph. So it can be off-putting. And you look through and you actually see them in conversation with each other. And you think, did people really used to talk like that? Were they so very literate? Because much of the conversation that you find is using, let's say, big words. It's using big words words and they often say i'm going to teach you an idiom which is not it's not related to books now they often see same and it's quite nasty sounding they seem to have verbal diarrhea yeah who said that <laughs> who, who said it trust you to know it that verbal diarrhea you talk about when someone's talking oh Ooh. god Sally's coming. <laughs> Let's go down here and avoid it. You know what she's like when she starts talking? She's got verbal diarrhea. Yeah, she never stops. You're laughing, Evelyn. Even have you never heard of that one before? Yes, I have heard that. Yeah. yeah, one of my friends is the one that you're mentioning. You're picturing my friend. Yeah, <laughs> she's she never stops talking. Stop. You cannot talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand the situation very well. But so you say. She goes what? She goes on a bit. Okay. She goes on and on. An expression I don't use, but doing certain parts is she rabbits on. Rabbit. Yeah. She rabbits on. You're right there, Christina. Yes, I, I'm just taking notes because I feel a little bit lost. I understand hey. about the part of books and, and all these very nice expression because I read a, a lot when I was in the university, but there are some new words for me, so I am trying to that's, that, not that's, lose I, the track. That's the idea to introduce you to the new words, and I'm not and I'm not putting them into Angela. How are you doing? Are you following everything? Hey Angela! Oh <laughs> <laughs> Are you following? A yeah, bit? because there are two uh, two babies here. So I, You've got two no, babies. No, I have one uh, daughter, but my daughter is with another child, so they <laughs> move around. <laughs> children, it's my a... students' children. Okay, my students' children. Can you hear them? <laughs> no, I, I could no. hear something earlier. All right. My students' children, I can, I can say this. I don't mean it really. 
Mm. I'm gonna I'm typing this one. Are the bane of my teaching life, the bane of my life. Have you heard of bane? that? What does it mean, bane? Yeah. I, I have I and I don't know the origin and I don't really know what bane means. I only know that expression. If something is a bane of your life, it means it's something which always causes you trouble. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm not being too serious about this, but oh, yeah. I have I seem in, in my online teaching career to have had more women than I have men. And of course, many of them have children. The child sometimes appears as well. Oh, she's telling the child, especially unmarried mums, uh, 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 as as well. Okay, and it's turn that television down, and it's going on. Like, I'm joking. Sometimes it's quite fun, and I talk to the kids as well. I should say that the bane of their mother's life. I've got one lovely Ukrainian lady, and. We rush to finish her lesson before she has to go and do the school run to pick her little boy up. Do you know school run? The school run? Christina, you got school run? A school what, pardon? Putting it in chat. The school run, when you, you go in the car to pick up your child. Mm. Okay, mm. the school run, okay? Your children are too old for you to do the school run, aren't they? They definitely are. Yeah, but she, and she has to finish, and and she's trying to find a job, but but she she's got a three year old, so it's always very difficult. Do you have children, Evelyn? Do you do the school run? No, I don't have children. You don't have. Children. I'm not planning on having children. You're not planning on. Children. Yeah. So yeah. I know nothing about what you're talking. I'm mentioning. <laughs> Let me show you the PowerPoint and we'll um, I'm going to share screen then. Okay, I prepared this ages ago and never got onto it. it. We've already done films and TV series, but some of the language is the same. Can you all see the PowerPoint? Can yes. you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Tell yes. Me. yes, no. Okay. All right blurb this is what i was reading okay a blurb now you're going to know um marima milena rahila you're going to know some some of this language already because we talked about books milena we've got there woman of snow is a poignant chronicle poignant milena you can explain what we mean by poignant Remember? Not really. Like touching. Sorry? Sorrowful. Yeah. Sad. Sad. Yeah. Rahira, do you remember? Are you there? Because I can't see everyone. I, I remember. How would you say? Uh, I we, think talked about, we talked about Jack and Rose in the Titanic and yeah. their love story being poignant. Anyone else know what poignant mean? Okay. We'll come back to it in a minute. Touching. Sorry? Okay, I'm I'm going to we'll do we we'll right. do a little quiz in a minute. So let's uh, let's go on to this next one here. Barris's third novel is a compelling tale. Compelling <laughs> tale story, as in for it now. Le boot. <laughs> Lugubrious. How about lugubrious? <coughs> anyone know? Tell me. Can anyone mm. have any ideas? It's a good word. It's what do you call it? On a map, can never say the word on a map to fit. It sounds a bit like it means. Okay, lugubrious setting. All right, we don't know. We'll come to that in a minute. Page turner. Okay, we've talked about page turner. We're here now. Enigmatic. What's enigmatic mean? Not clear. Not, not. Yes, it mean not clear. Full of questions, unanswered questions. Unanswered uh, questions. questions, yes. So the, the noun is enigma. 
Okay, so it's a puzzle. Macabre. Mac what about macabre? Should you say raw? Sorry? Should you say it's very raw? It's quite disturbing. Yeah. I'm, I'm down here, macabre. Not very raw. Really raw. Filled with suspense. It yes, but so a detective novel could be filled with the suspense, but not necessarily macabre. How about chilling? Scary and really to the bone. Yeah, to the bone. Yeah, good. All right, scary. Breathtaking achievement. That's pretty ob obvious, isn't it? Okay, breathtaking. Oh, a journey of self-discovery that enchants and saddens. Oops, okay, go away. With a combination of humor. What's wry humor? Can it be irony? That it uses irony? It, 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 sorry, who, who's saying that? Because I'm not... I, I Evelyn. Can't, sorry? Who? Evelyn. Evelyn, yeah. I'm asking you because I can't see you all now because I've got uh, you, you disappear. Yes, Evelyn, okay, it can be. No problem. It's wry humor. Sarcastic. It, it, it's a bit like ironic. We, we British have a reputation for ironic humor, British sense of humor. Some people might call it sarcasm. We like to call it I irony. <coughs> Excuse me. It's it's humor in bleak situations. Bleak, B L E A K, in difficult situations. Evocative scenes of life. Evocative. You think about evocative. What does it mean? If something evokes, evokes a feeling. What does it, it do? It touches. It awakes some kind of feeling. It yes. brings out. It awakes. It brings out. Yeah, it brings out a feeling, usually of the past. Okay, let's look at the next. Let's look at the next slide. Let's try and match these. Amazing achievement is obvious, isn't it? Isn't it a breathtaking achievement? A moving and sad description of a sequence of events. That would be poignant. A chronicle. A chronicle is you used to get some newspapers called called chronicles. You have it's an old word. It go, it goes back many years because you had the Anglo-Saxon chronicles written in the I don't know something like the tenth century, which is it's like a series. Okay, so a chronicle is. A, a series of events, okay, a poignant chronicle. You could have, you can use it in a different way. His life has been a chronicle of sadness. His chron, his, my day has been a chronicle. Of, a chron bless you, man. Uh, thank you. <laughs> my day has been a chronicle of mishaps. Mishaps. You know what a mishap is. More accidents. More accidents. M I S H A P S. It's because I got up, I dropped my cereal bowl on uh, on the floor. Then I put on my I put on my shoes, and I discovered I was wearing odd shoes when I went out. And then I backed the car out of the garage into a lamp post, and it was a series of mishaps. Scenes which arouse memories or images. Evocative. 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 A mystery story. Enigmatic tale. Yeah, enigmatic. And an enigma is a puzzle, basically. Uh, so that's what it means. If someone is enigmatic, you don't understand them. They seem to, they might be holding something back. You can't understand them. What's a word for saying that you don't understand? You don't understand someone's character, her behavior. It, it's an expression. It's, it's a phrasal verb, actually. You can't make... I can't make sense of 
Yeah, you're on the right track. I can't make that's you. I can't make sense of him. It's usually about what he's. I can't make sense of what he's saying. But you're on the right tracks. Okay, you say. I could say, oh, I can't make mm-hmm. Milena out. Okay, I can't make her out. Mm-hmm. She's in a, a, an enigma personality. Sorry, Milena, I didn't mean to pick. I didn't didn't mean to pick on you. Again. Again. I know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting my own back for yesterday <laughs> when you told me who the producer of his Titanic was because I got it wrong. <laughs> and I, I, and I, I, I thought the producer of Titanic was Steven Spielberg. And you said it was, what was it, James Cameron? And she's saying, I think it's James Cameron. I said, no, well, I'm not so sure, but I'm prepared to, I'm prepared to admit I'm wrong if I am. Go and Google. So she came back and said, you're wrong. <laughs> aggressively yeah, with this kind of air of superior, superiority it, it was kids go it wasn't like that you just <laughs> interpreted in that way it's not I my fault it, for, uh, it, it was like kids <laughs> go wrong so there okay, I'm, I'm just going to flash through these very quickly all right tell me if you want any took me ages making these mm-hmm. page turner Enigmatic tale. It's a good image, isn't it? Mm. Okay. Chilling. Funny chilling it when you think about it, isn't it? Cause great fear. Mm-hmm. But now you find it used, and you wouldn't have done when I was younger, where people say, let's go chill. Mm-hmm. Let's chill out. Or I'm chill. I'm I'm chill. I'm just chilling out yet you have this this meaning of causing great fear it, it, i was being followed you know, it was a chilling i had a chilling chilling feeling that i was being followed evocative scene. pictures steve yeah i can't remember where i got yeah. them, i think they were suggested by powerpoint actually evocative is a lovely word it, Many things can be evocative. You, you you can hear a piece of music and it's evo- evocative of when you were a teen or when you were in a certain place or a certain relationship which you had some uh, with someone. Music certainly does that. That for me, it, it, to me, it, it can remind me of certain periods in my my life but yeah but films do that as well okay and also wine wine, wine evokes senses images tastes oh that's a new one on me everybody. right let's look at this vocabulary i'll put it down can't get into it okay you can't get into it i've started this you know how's your new book no, mm. can't get into it. That sometimes happens, doesn't it? You, you, you start reading a book and it takes a few pages. Sometimes you have to persist before it grabs you, before you're interested. But at other times, put it away. Heavy going. Milena, you could use heavy going, couldn't you? Who could you use heavy going about? Dostoevsky. 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 <laughs> yes. I thought, you, I thought you were going to say um, Dickens. I've never even tried Dostoevsky. Crime and Punishment was also my designated reading, but I've never finished it. No, thank God. We didn't. No, we yeah. did not. One, one third. Really? I managed one third. Very hard to read. I would have got through that much. Much. Fortunately, most of our designated reading, I, th- I think, it was quite good. So I, I would prefer Dickens if I had the choice. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Bedtime reading. You understand that? Often it's something lighter, but I, it doesn't bother me. If I used to read things the, uh, which were very suspenseful, like spy novels, uh, John le Carre. And then I couldn't get to sleep because I kept you know, a few, turning a few page, pages more. And, and you've got lightweight. Now, my 
my ex-wife, first ex-wife, uh, with whom I am still good, very good friends, okay, she's a best friend, she reads a lot. She reads a lot more than I do these days. But she reads light stuff because she's very literate, very in intelligent, but she reads, um, yeah, lightweight stuff because that's what suits so it's not my taste sometimes i will read i have read in the past some such thing she's been reading and it's been okay we have main character protagonist now i talked about this the other day where's my italian italian is angela and who's italian me you are angela Angela, isn't it? I'm Italian. <clears throat> when I was working in Italy, I used to, there were two words I used to get fed up of reading when kids were doing an essay. And one was protagonist. We were talking about this the other day. Because, it, it yeah, it's a genuine word, but we don't really use it. If I'm If I was describing a film or a novel to you, I wouldn't say the main protagonist. I'd say the main character. But teens, I was working in an Italian state school. Scuola superiore. And uh, they often would say the protagonist. The other word, which I found overused by them, that's put me off it, and there's nothing wrong with the word, but it's put me off it, was moreover this. More over that. Oh God, don't stop using it. There are other ways of saying it. Furthermore, in addition, as well as that, be wary of protagonist. Try to get your students not to overuse more over. There are different ways of doing it. You got biography and autobiography. You know the difference. Intrigue sticks in the mind. Okay, sticks in the mind. That's the other one. I've got, I'm, it's not a lesson, I'm helping a Ukrainian friend out at, in half an hour's time, so I'm going to have to go. Yeah, right. Great to see you all. Bye. Bye, Bye ladies. As we say in English, I'll love you and leave you. <laughs> expression. I'll love you and leave you. See you soon. All right. See you. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.